to. Anyway, enough of that. So uh, the first item on the agenda is the listers to explain the need for the CAMA software action unlikely. Listers, welcome. Good evening. All right, can you hear us? Yes, we can, can hear we, you, but we can't see you. Amy, can we right. see you? I like to see people when they're talking to us. Is it possible? We to don't have, we're at the Lister computer in the office and we do not have a camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, before the meeting last time, um, Eric and I had basically just gotten off the phone with the um, representatives uh, regarding the CAMA software for the Lister. Uh, the par it's basically the system that contains all of the parcels, all the parcel data, not the grand list software, but this is a separate um, chunk of software. Basically, that can, basically the appraisal data. It's all the appraisal data with the drawing sketches, all the square footage and much of the history for all the parcels is, is in that software. Um, and so, um, we also heard that it was um, that we needed to get you anything about budget stuff. We needed to get it to you that night. So that's, uh, we wanted to apologize for the short notice on this. It was something that sort of came to our attention last minute. So it's not something that we had thought about um, broadly uh, before. And then it sort of all of a sudden came to light that it's gonna need action before the state software action happens. Does that make that a good way to put it? You think? Basically, yeah. As you well, all, all are well aware, I'm sure, the state's mandating that we get this new grand list software, and it's going to come this summer sometime. No, not this summer. It's two summers. Well, it's, two summers, but yeah. by this August, we're going to be loading it. No, we're not loading the state stuff until two years out. The state stuff originally was supposed to be a year out, but they're, they pushed it out another year. So it's going to be for FY23 instead of 22. Right. Okay. So again, you guys, you guys have now confused me again. I apologize. Okay. So I'm confused too. Need, you're saying we need to have this software this summer but when is the state going to actually have it so we can use it? Okay, there's actually, the, the short end is we've got an A and a B. A software is the state grand list software. There's a partner software that's the B software that is the CAMA, C-A-M-A. -A. And that is the software that the town currently pays for a subscription through NIMRIC to use NIMRIC's Microsoft CAMA. That's the current data system that we're using for our CAMA. Again, so two different programs that work together. The state owns the grand list software. The town pays for a license to use currently and has for years the Microsoft NIMRIC system to maintain all of the parcel data. Right. They partner together. One talks to the other to create the grand list that gets generated each year. And as this, this has been in place for years. It has been updated since way before my time here. So the state so is the, stopping, they're no longer gonna offer the NEMRIC software? They're mandating that we buy this other software? No, the state has never provided the CAMA software. The towns have always been on their own to pay for whatever CAMA software they choose. And many states, many towns, including ours, have used the NIMRIC software because it was part of the package deal that we got from NIMRIC. The package deal from NIMRIC with regard to the property stuff included the CAMA and then the state-owned grand list. Got it. The CAMA, okay, okay. So just, just stop one minute. So the, the piece of this that I'm missing is Right now, we're using NEMRIC CAMA software, and we pay them a fee monthly or quarterly or whatever it is to use that software. Are they yeah. no longer going to let us use that software? Why are we switching to the new software? Their software is very antiquated, and we have been 
led to believe that the new grand list software will not, well, the state will get the information it needs for grand list value. But from the town's perspective, it will make it harder for us to maintain the CAMA information because some of what is in the current grand list and what is in the current CAMA software is not, the new state software has more going on than what we have available in the current CAMA software. Does that make sense? It's hard to talk in theory, but. So it is, and have you, have you had a chance to see the new software? We have. So the state started talking. So we are members about, of, of VALA, V-A-L-A, which is the Vermont Assessors and Listers Association. And for most of the towns in the state are members and cities too. And when we have come to, and the state Department of Taxes, PVR, Property Valuation Review, that's the office that we primarily work with as listers. Mm -hmm. So when we, we typically would go to a VALA meeting once a year, a big conference all day. Last year it was online. Before that, it was usually in person, Rutland or Lake Maury, somewhere around the state. The past few years, when we were at the in-person conferences, we have actually had a chance to go to workshops where we were forewarned <laughs> about this. And we were encouraged to go to demonstrations that were being provided by the various vendors of the CAMA system. Um, and with regard to that kind of system, there are many in the, well, no, there aren't many. There are several in the marketplace, um, but there are really only two primarily that are, um, that the state was, and Vela were inviting to these meetings. So we were sort of being funneled to look at these two different types of software. Neither of them was the Nimric software. One was the vision company, and that's the information that we passed along to you. The other was a different company, which provides a software called Patriot. Um, and it's a similar type program, but um, it is, it has been used for years by some towns in the Southern part of the state. And over time, it, it has, um, the folks that have used that either love it or hate it, but it's not one that we're familiar with. And the demonstration that we saw of both, because we went to each, the vision system seemed to be much more user friendly. And frankly, looking forward, it made more sense because it is less clunky. So Zoom forward, there was a Zoom meeting for the Vela conference this past year. And during that meeting, a representative from Axiomatic, that's the company who the state has contracted to make the new grand list software. During the Vela meeting, we were able to see a demonstration of the Axiomatic software and we were also able to see from the vision vendor how they would potentially work together. So it was the first time that we actually got to see, it, and it was in this online meeting format, um, how the two, what the two softwares look like, um, you know, from from the position of sitting at the computer and seeing how they potentially work together. Um, so. We took that information. We've, we've had the paperwork from the vision company now for a couple of years. And um, when we saw the presentation back, I think it was like September, um, when we saw that, we started trying to figure out whether we needed to get in touch with the people sooner or later. Long, long story short, time got ahead of us and we realized in late November, early December that we really needed to get in touch with these folks to figure out what it was going to look like um, 
you know, what, what that would take, the CAMA software, what it would take to put a new CAMA software in place. And frankly, we hadn't thought about doing that in advance of having the new state grand list software, but it became painstakingly clear in talking with the representative of the, the CAMA software that our lives will be easier if we have the CAMA software perfected and the parcels perfected before the state grand list software is introduced for fiscal year 23. So that is when we scrambled with her to try and get a, a, a number from her and um, provided you with the documentation two weeks ago. Um, we have, just to be really clear, no intention of signing any contracts with anybody anytime in the next few weeks or months. <laughs> just to be really straight up, we are also not 100% sure which, what, you know, which way we would go um, on the software. We kind of go back and forth talking about, you know, would it make more sense to have somebody do a full conversion for us, or is it something that we actually might be able to do partly in-house? So we're still thinking through that, too. Um, there's a lot of, we still have a lot of questions, but we do know that the old Nimric software, Microsoft, which we've been using, which, not to confuse things, but we also pay a third-party vendor for our sketching program, which is really old and out of date. Um, that's the one that provides where we go in and we make the drawings of each house. We pay them a separate fee, this third party company, Apex, and we pay them an we pay them an annual fee and we've never been successful at getting support from them. Um, so Amy, I'm, I'm sorry so to interrupt you. Could, could you just give me an idea of what we are paying now for the way we operate now and what we will be paying under the new system is there i'm sure we pay for the software and then there's some kind of a monthly or annual service charge right i i don't know the numbers i mean i really don't have them on the top of my head of what we pay for nimric we pay nimric thousands of dollars every year for both the office suites and separately we pay them thousands of dollars a year for the CAMA separately. And then we pay them for what they call disaster backup services, again, for both of those and they're billed separately. Um, we also pay lots of different intermittent fees for things like Marshall and Swift access, or again, the drawing software. They're, so it's a, mish, it's a mishmash. Okay. It is definitely- Enough, okay. enough please. So, all I'm all I'm suggesting is when you guys get your arms around this, we put the money that you requested in the budget as a as a placekeeper. But please share with us the more detailed information as you come to making a decision. I understand it's your decision, but we just want to understand, you know, lead us through the decision making process when you get there. Does that make sense? It, it does, and I think part of that being I think you'll agree. Comparison. I mean, if anything, Peter, we're probably respectfully we're probably more transparent than we ever need to be, which confuses things <laughs> by giving too many details. But yes, absolutely, we we wouldn't well, we do need, anything without. We don't, we don't need to know the nitty gritty, truly, but understanding why we have to do it and you know, what the future looks like down the road to the extent you can tell us is just helpful. It's good information for us to have because it's it's a good chunk of money, as you well know, and it's a good chunk of money right now. So anyway. It is. It is. And we do pay thousands of dollars a year for the current maintenance. There's no question. And we can, we certainly will before we sign anything or even, you know, come to a real decision. Um, look at the numbers on you know what the difference would be with the different um, options that they offer but it would be to, to put it in a rough analogy if we continued trying to use the numeric microsoft system 
going forward with where the world is going with GPS and where the new grandless software is going, um, it would be like trying to run a Windows 7 system right now, which we all know we had to get rid of all of our town computers because no longer support it. So it's, it's a crash waiting to happen and we wanna avoid that. Questions, board members? Yeah, I have just one comment. If, uh, Amy, when you put that stuff together, can you see if you could put together the numbers of what we're spending now so that we can compare that when you come out with the new numbers? Sure, you mean on the maintenance that we pay right now? Right, everything you had mentioned earlier, a third party in there too. So anything that's associated with it that's that we're gonna be replacing with a new system. Sure, sure. I mean, it would primarily be the maintenance cost because we, we, I guess, paid for the NIMRIC or I don't know if we actually ever paid them a lump sum of money for it or if we just pay it in the maintenance. It's, whatever, it's whatever, not, it is, whatever it is. We'll uh, find out whatever we, we just pay the fee, I believe. Unless, yeah. Dorinda, you've, you've never seen any lump sum payment to NIMRIC, have you? I know we pay like $5,000 annually, I think the number uh, is right now, um, which they just went up in the last year. It was a lot cheaper previously, but I believe in... Amy can probably answer this, but that's mostly support and um, the and not the actual different modules. Yeah, but I'm right. I right though that we didn't actually pay for the modules. You say they give us the modules, but we pay the support fee or the maintenance. That was that was before my time, so I don't know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm not. Yeah, none of us is sure how to track that one back, Peter. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. I'll see what I can find. Okay, thank you. How much did we put in the budget two weeks ago? I couldn't remember exactly how much. 15,000. Thanks, Steve. Anything else for Amy and Eric? Okay, guys, thank you. I, I, uh, I didn't mean to be grumpy when you, when you jumped us at our, at our, uh, budget meeting, but there we were scrambling for hundreds of dollars and all of a sudden you hit us up for that big number and put us in a sour oh, mind. I understand it wasn't your fault. Well, I mean, it, it was, we didn't, we didn't, yeah, it just sort of didn't hit, nothing hit the fan until there it is. Okay. Right now. Okay, we get it. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. You have anything else for us while we've got you? Um, you guys are doing great work. <laughs> thanks for putting in the time you're doing on all this stuff okay thanks guys yeah. okay. Good evening. all right good night okay review town meeting morning Everybody received that, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, it. I mean, the, I didn't look at the typos one. Uh, I mean, I only found one typo, which was putting in mosaics twice. Yeah. Is that anything else, Sarah? Well, that affected the total. That so the so the on Article Fifteen, uh, it is a hundred dollars less. So the sum is five thousand seventeen. A hundred less because it's you had it in for two fifty for each one. No, no. No, it was that was listed twice, but prior to that, there was another one listed twice that was a hundred dollars, and we caught that one in the total. The second um, one was not added in there; it was just listed twice. It was not part of the total. Great. So the figure on article. 15 is 5017. Oh, 5017, okay. I must have the most recent one because that's what mine says. Yeah, it should. It should have a little 19 in the in the corner, 11921 in the in the footer. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I move it, I move it, move the uh oh sorry. Uh, wait a minute, hold on, Mary. I just um, wanted to be able. All right. Okay. Go ahead. 
I move approval of the uh, 2021 um, warning for the annual town meeting on March 2nd, 2021. I'll second. second. I'll second. Okay. Um, so Article 2 and Article 3 are basically exactly the same as what we're doing now, right, Sarah? Yes. Uh, Dorinda and I discussed changing the dates that the 20th landed on work days, but we decided that it was probably, or Dorinda thought it was a good idea to just stick with the 20th. It's a number people can remember. It goes all the way back to our old number, November 20th. So yeah, that's I agree. That every, every time we do something to change those dates, we cause more chaos than we, uh, right. than we solve. Um, and I just ask one question about the figures. Is Article 4 still correct if we have to reduce Article 15 by a hundred dollars, the one million three hundred eighty-two seven thirty-eight. That's the town budget. The okay. one that we changed with special articles. But isn't the special articles okay? All right, you. No, nope, they're all separate. They might get voted down. Yep. Yeah, right. Okay. Sorry, I forgot. I no, thought that's that right. That that's the right number. Um, okay. So I just have a I just have a question on wording. In Article 5, which is, uh, talk about the big surprise. Instead of saying new grader, do we say new road grader? And do we say in an amount, instead of saying up to, do we say not to exceed 290000 Yeah, I think that's a good idea, both of those. Do you want new road grader in amount not to exceed two hundred ninety? Thousand for a term not to exceed 15, 15 years. Yeah. Can I just ask, is this so? This would be starting in fiscal year twenty two, right? July one, twenty one. July one is when we would be able to purchase it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and when would the first payment be due in the fiscal year 22 or not until? In 22, it's exactly one year from the date you take out the loan. So we need to be careful exactly what date because taxes right. won't be coming in until August. Right. Um, so, well, I'm sorry, go ahead, Liz. I was just going to say, and just to refresh my memory, the book that we get in the, the mail, the town report, will there be any explanation around these these articles? Or is this how it looks with, with no explanation? Because normally at town meeting, we talk about it. That's what the informational meetings are going right. to be. OK. Wait. Liz, I'm just asking for clarification. When you say these articles, do you mean just the greater or do you mean everything else? I basically mean all the articles. Like, you know, for someone almost, may not know like what the Middlesex Conservation Fund every is. Every single, every single article requesting money has, a, has an accompanying report. That's why, that's what we're killing ourselves over. So there will be something about the greater. I have not written anything about the greater. If someone else would like to write something about the greater, go ahead. I know nothing <laughs> about the greater. But you're saying everything that has a dollar value attached to it is going to have a narrative, a written narrative. Even Big Heavy World. What the hell is that? What's Big Heavy World? Well, it's on, it's on your, it's one of your two hundred and fifty dollar uh, requests. I meant to right. ask. What but, is it? But, but my question is, I, I know that those get those little articles. Do these articles that we usually, they all have a narrative too? I just don't remember. I don't have a thing in front of me. Oh. So, so Liz, just to be clear, the, the article one is always Australian ballot. So there's really nothing yes. about that. We don't typically have uh, statements from candidates right. or anything like that in the yeah. town report. Article two, um, typically we have not put anything in there unless we're making a change and then we put it in our select board report, okay? Yeah. And and the same with Article Three. Right, and so I think that my question is for some of these things that may not normally have some sort of narrative associated with them, I think it would behoove us to have something because most people aren't going to attend these public 
hearings and and if they have something that can explain why we need a new grader aren't those going to be in the town report that's what i'm asking is my question yes aren't they as far as i as far as i know that the town report isn't going to change we're going to still publish the thing with a with a our special articles and and all of their explanations they're already i'll speak for sarah but they're already there except for the one on the grader because that was just added I but, see. But all, all like those. home health and hospice all of those are in there yeah okay so steve yes remind me and i know we sat down and went over the went over the road report did we talk about the grader and the road report uh if we didn't we should That's where it would. That's where it would appear. I would think. Well, it should be. It should be spelled out in a separate one too, so people can follow it. Even if you take the same sentence okay. out and put it into someplace else. I Why would don't think. we get something together to put in the town report? Sounds good. Okay, where would it go though? Well, wasn't wasn't Phil going to write some sort of budget explanation? Uh, maybe it would go in there. With like a little breakout what the what you would do with the why are you asking for all this money for a town think, for a road grader yeah i actually think that's that's a perfect place for it to be but that of course is not included in the town but you know this i just was i i always tell you i come up with these things in the middle of the night but honest to god that's when i think of these things all of a sudden i thought road grader i sat right up in bed <laughs> so, so <laughs> Anyway, we need to we need to make sure because that that's a big deal. That's big money, and uh, it's a big deal. And yes, we're going to talk about it at the informational meeting. But you're right for the people who don't go to the informational meeting and are just looking at the town report. Um, we need to have something in there. So I will uh, I will make a note and I will talk to Phil about that. Well, I, I, I agree with what uh, Steve said too, that he should add, he put something together and add it in his town report. In well, his the, Bill's report is gonna be in the town report. Yeah, but don't you think that, that, that Steve ought to say that too? He can certainly say it in the, in the road report. Yes, Mary. And right. Yes, the more we say it, the better it is. I'll, I'll add a paragraph to that uh, highway report. Okay. I mean, the best, you know, we've been talking, the other thing is, hopefully people are ready for this. We've only been talking about it for five years, but you never know. No, it's I mean, the, problem the, is, the, the, the problem is, and we've got to be careful what we say, but um, we're going to have financial information and maybe Steve should put this in his report about the estimated cost of leasing a grader if our current grader dies, because there is some probability if we don't get a new grader, not only is this grader inefficient to use, but if it, if it dies and all of a sudden needs $75,000 in repairs, A, we've lost our trade in value completely, and B, we're gonna spend a lot more money than we would spend on the bond paying for a rented grader until we can get approval at a special meeting or whatever we have to do to buy a new grader anyway. I don't want to get I don't want to get too far in the weeds of this if people are ready to support it, but uh, it's a big number. So can I just ask to, uh, a question about that? Like so, and and people might not understand this, like in terms of of how like the how these votes work. So like we're voting on Article Four. The townspeople are voting on Article Four, which technically doesn't include a greater right now, but will if that passes. And so right now, 1,382,000 is a certain percentage of uh, a budget increase, right? We came up with, what was it? 3%? I can't remember. Two. Four point. Right. So adding in another 20,000 per year, or whatever it would be, 290 plus the interest. The budget, though, was what? Sure. It's not in this budget. It's a year away. Yeah, but we're, yes, we're going to, going to purchase it, it, but there are no payments for a year. I thought Dorinda said it would be in fiscal year 22, the first payment. No. no. 
No, See? not a year from when you purchase it. That's why you need to wait until after July 1 to purchase okay, it. Okay, so it won't be till fiscal year 23, and therefore it will be in fiscal year 23's budget. Right. $20,000 monthly. Right. So this is not, this is not changing this year. Okay. Okay. Got it's it. Making a, it's making a commitment for the long term. Okay. Um, and so I don't know. I think that should also be explained then in, if it can be that the, it would be, uh, that the first payment would be in next year's budget. So that people, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So people don't think right. we're increasing this year's. Right. Um, because here's the reality. We don't have, we're not having conversation about this except at our informational meetings that if we're lucky, we're going to get, you know, people to come to, which I hope hundreds, hundreds of anxious voters will be participating. I hope so. Um, I don't. Yes, you're correct. That's why it's more important than ever right. because in a normal town meeting format, in our old format, um, you know, someone from the town, me, Steve, someone, you would get up and explain all of this. Well, we're not gonna have the opportunity to do that. And also I would point out if, if the last article on our warning passes, we will never again have the opportunity and it will make special articles presented by the select board a little more difficult. So this is good practice. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, I, well, I did have a question. So Phil's letter that he's been writing over the past few years, is that, I can't remember. I thought that was a separate piece of paper that sort of showed up at town meeting, but it's in the actual. Um, it's usually tacked it's on. It's usually uh, tacked on to the end of the select board report. It's just kind of like, okay, here's the select board report from, from the previous year. And then Phil talks about the budget that people are going to vote on. Because and that's in our town report that everyone's getting mailed to them. Correct. And, and of course, the report from the budget committee is also in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. So can I ask a question when it says by petition, only one of the articles by, by petition is the North Branch. Everybody else was given what they had the year before and didn't have to do a petition. Is that correct? correct. Sarah? That's correct. And then when did this last item come in? Um, this um, article. Last second. The last it's, second. <laughs> it came in at 4.45 PM. I had the signatures verified by 4.50 PM. It came in around 4.40 PM on Thursday. And that now, was- Is this regarding um, special, special articles that uh, begin like with article six or all? All special articles. But not the town budget. Not the budget, but if the town puts in, you know, a special article for $5,000 for this or $290,000 bond for road grader, those are all special articles. Mm -hmm. So it may cause us to rethink how we do our budget. Like we may want to include those things in our budget and then talk about them so they are not special articles and they are and they come up at town meeting but that's right that's but wasn't decision. the greater required to be a separate article regardless because of the well, cost? because of the bond yes i as believe a, right for a certain period of time you yeah. have to put it as a special yeah. article it has right. to be voted on by paper ballot but remember yeah. remember we didn't know about that so we've only started doing it like for two or three years <laughs> wait can sarah please repeat that because there are people talking over her I couldn't hear. There, if you, it's a, it's part of the indebtedness statute of the Vermont's, the VSA. If you borrow for a certain period of time, I forget exactly how much it is. I think it might be. Five years, I think. If they, above, yeah, you have to put it before the voters and they have to have vote on it by paper ballot. Okay. So it, no matter what, you still have to vote on it by paper ballot. That greater would have been a paper ballot. You can't just raise your hands like what we did with the fire department, the fire truck, and then we realized, oh no, we had. That's why we had to have that special election. Do you remember that a few years ago? Yeah, yeah I do. So it always has to be. If you're going to borrow it that long, it always has to be by paper ballot, regardless. So is there also the opportunity to explain in layperson's terms what Article 16 means to people? Because I can guarantee you there will be some 
pushback from certain people in the town on both sides as to why people should vote for this or against it, but to say it in a sort of non, I don't wanna use partisan, but just to say, what does this mean to people? Because I wouldn't necessarily know what a special article is. Um, and so, you know, in my mind, and like, so for example, if this were, if we were looking at this warning right now, um, which articles wouldn't be included? Like article three and article four and article two, or just article four? Article four would. Um, That's well, the budget. One, two, one, two, and three. Or, I mean, so is town, meeting in, town meeting in the future, okay, yeah. is going to be everything down through the budget, and that's it. Except that Article 1 is already by Australian ballot. Oh, no, it's not. Um, oh, yes, it is, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. But I'm just, but I'm just saying. Yeah. That, yes. So basically, town meeting is going to be a discussion of the budget. Okay. Well, if you had something like, um, you know, should we change the treasurer's term from one to three years, right. or you have one of those non-binding uh, articles, those would not be affected. It's only articles that ask for money. So right. I think that needs to be like somehow stated so that people understand what types of things that they would be, um, well, it says requesting town taxpayer funding. So maybe that's... So here's... I mean, here's an interesting question. So there's a case where we haven't, I mean, it's, it's a petition, right? So the people who I would, I would have said to them if they had asked me, which they didn't, the people getting those signatures, are you going to be on the Zoom meeting to talk about the article that you petitioned for? And uh, I would also say to them, are you going to write something up to put in the town report to talk about that? Because it is the people who are petitioning. Yeah. I really don't think it's up to us, the select board, to talk about that and explain it. That said, if there's nobody who's ready to stand up and talk about it, we'll probably be talking about it at the informational meeting. So yeah. I don't know how we handle that. Well, I, I agree with Liz, though. Not a lot of people are going to be, at, as, as many people as we would hope, are going to attend the special meetings, and it's confusing. So do we know who, who led this petition effort? That we could contact them and ask them to write something up? Sarah, do you know that? I think it was a community effort from a lot of people. Well, oh. here's the thing. I, I would, um, and I don't want to say they shouldn't be the ones writing it up, but I also think that there could be some bias in how it's written. And I think what we're really looking for is what does this mean to the townspeople? Just directly in two sentences. And maybe this is it. Maybe this is enough to say, um, and it might be like, what this? What will this mean to you? It means town meeting will only be talking about the municipal budget um, and any articles that don't require funding or something like that. I can write a paragraph that's, that's all it needs to say. It doesn't need to be, you know, it just needs to be clear so that people understand. Like, I, it shouldn't say, oh, and this means potentially the demise of town meeting. That's going to happen on Front Porch Forum by people who want to persuade voters to vote one way or the other. I want to make a short. Should we ask, should we ask Sarah to add, we're going to consider our select board report in a few minutes here. Should we ask Sarah to write a paragraph which talks about Article 16? Yes. That's probably where it should be, right? Yeah. Why do you think why do you think it should go in the select board report? Because it's your warning? Yeah. Okay. So why don't I do this? Why don't I just add a paragraph that says articles, you know, Article 16 is a new addition to the or, or relatively new um, addition to the warning. Uh, and what it means is that. Uh, budgets would be voted on it by the floor and other uh, requests uh, or issues would be voted on at the floor as long as they don't ask for money. But if there's any, any article, any request for money, including from the town uh, right. outside of the budget, that would have to be voted on by a paper ballot, Australian ballot. Yeah. 
just like town officer. Yep. yep. Yeah, I think that's I think that's good to make it just a very like impersonal, not taking sides. Just excellent. No, this is what it is, right? That's exactly. What what would you do you think an example would be helpful like saying for example on this annual um warning that only articles two three and four would be considered and the uh, if we had were able to have an in town uh, a re in person meeting and all the rest would be voted by australian ballot I yeah. Just I just think, I mean, that's fine, but I, I want to make it simple Me and too. practical. You could just say that dinner will start at 5.15 instead of 7. I'm not going to say yeah. that. that. That's bias right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. That was a joke. I just, I just think that, you know, if you had an example of how much would now be Australian ballot, it would be helpful. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll do that if you want to. That way we can just keep it really cut and dry. Just break it out at the bottom and just explain as for article 16 that's that's what this is about just right. so you understand uh, just people just so people understand that if, that if, what that it is i mean people are going to look at that and i think a lot of people like liz said are going to what's a special article i mean i just don't think they're going to understand what that means but yeah. yeah well money articles that ask for money that's what it means other than the budget <laughs> well, i i just like the i i like the example because there it yeah, is. You could say, for example, articles six through or five through 20 or whatever they are would be voted on Australian. Whatever. I trust Sarah to do a good, her usual good job of doing this and explaining it. <laughs> That's why we well, paid. I don't, think, well, I don't think you need to, big, need to beat a dead horse. It's not that complicated. Yeah. But I agree. I, I am, I. I'm very concerned that we're going to have maybe half the number of people who at these informational meetings that we normally have at town meeting, which means it's going to be a small percentage of the voters. And that is disappointing if that's what it is, but that may be what it is. So anyway, are we ready to vote on the warning, on the motion? And let me just say, I accept the amendment to, um, Article, Peter, what was that? Article five offered by Peter Hood. Yeah, okay. Wait, thank what? You. Amendment, what? We just changed the language in article five a little bit. Tweak the language. Oh, oh right, 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 yeah. Okay, all in favor? Oh, Aye. 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 Steve, Liz? Aye. Steve left. Muted, I think. Steve is gone. Steve is gone. Well, he seconded it. Well, I don't see him up there. No, he's not. He's gone. Well, we have enough. We're good. He's gone. He'll, he'll come back. He'll, he'll come back. Um, the report. Okay. With the passage of H48, considering whether to mail all active registered Middlesex voters residing in the U.S. absentee ballots, residing in the U.S., absentee ballots for the 2021 town school meeting and considering correspondence from the Washington County, whatever all those initials mean, supervisory union district, regarding coordinating five towns. Hey, he's back. That was fast, we approved, Steve. We approved the warning, Steve, in your absence. <laughs> yep. That, that's great internet. <laughs> no, I got it. So, Sarah, tell us, tell us what's going on here. Okay. So, um, we got a letter last week from the superintendent of the Washington Central Univers Unified Union School District saying, guess what? Um, all the five towns have to mail the school ballots the same way uh, because otherwise uh, it's not fair. And the best comparison, the problem that we have here, and I've spent a lot of time talking about this with Will Senning at the Secretary of State's office, and there's some good news on that front, is that the central, the school district is now its own municipal entity. 
And just like we can't automatically mail three fifths of Middlesex voters ballots, but require two fifths to ask for, for ballots, the same needs to apply for the school ballots. The problem is that the legislature did not imbue this municipal entity with any statutory power to run its own elections. So tonight uh, we have several towns um, as empowered by H48, which was signed this morning, that are deciding whether or not to automatically mail ballots or not mail ballots. And it looks like uh, four towns are gonna mail ballots and Berlin is not. And I'm not sure how that's all gonna work out. Uh, Will said it may be that actually the school district takes over Berlin's ballots and mails them for them. But in talking to Will, it seems like for one, for one the um, CARES Act has a little glitch in it. And if we did not apply for grant funding last year to pay for the mailing that we did, we, can, we are eligible uh, to get it this year. So the postcards that we mailed are all 100% reimbursable. And any mailings that we do for the town because of COVID, make sure it's in the minutes, are also 100% uh, reimbursable if we mail town ballots. If we mail school ballots as well, which is what we'll probably do, then we bill the school district somehow and then they uh, apply for the funding. So that is where we are. Do and, they get in the same envelope or separate envelopes? Uh, we usually mail them in the same envelopes. We always have. The difference is that when we were part of the, when we were the Middlesex Town School District, we got $4,000 from the school to offset our costs for a treasurer, including the school report, all those things. Now we get zero money from the school, um, but we still mail out the school ballots. We did, for example, last year. It's just that we've never, the school has always paid for their own ballots. It's just that now we're mailing to, you know, close to 1500 voters. It's a big expense. Mm -hmm. Well, my position is they should pay. And I don't know how we deal with that. They created this problem, not us. But they did. And the legislature did. But there, there, there does seem to be some um, reimbursement. So that's the good news. Does the reimbursement include, include staff time for doing it or is it just the cost of the ballots themselves and the postage? I think it's, well, the school pays for its own ballots. The, um, and the state pays for the envelopes. Well, what we're really talking about here is postage. And it's gonna be about 65 cents. Uh, and I'm assuming it's about 65 cents a, a, a packet for 1500. Yeah, but And part of that would get reimbursed by the school? Well, we would have to figure out what the difference was between uh, mailing one ballot versus mailing, you know, uh, two ballots, and then we'd have to build a school. The difference. Yeah. I would suggest. I would suggest of the cost. The cost of mailing their single ballot, which is probably fifty-five cents, and if we get our ballot in there for another ten cents, so be it. Yeah, I mean the money's there. Will says there's two million dollars earmarked just for this in 2021. So let me ask you this, Sarah. How does it work? Like you just sent us all those postcards and people are starting to send them back to you, I'm sure. Yeah. And are you holding on to those? Because obviously you don't have anything to mail right this minute anyway. And then if you decided to do, um, if we decided to do the whole townwide mailing, everyone would just get one. Right. And you would just continue to get these postcards. Is there any like problem on your end that we've done this and people are sending back and we're gonna send I mean, the value, the value of the postcards is also the same as the, what the value that the state had when they mailed their postcards out last summer, even though they were automatically mailing. I'm finding out which are bad addresses. It's amazing how people's addresses go bad so fast. But yeah. um, so they're serving that purpose. And they also had information on them, you know, informing people that there wasn't gonna be a town meeting. So they served another purpose. Um, but we're not going to, if, unless, uh, even if someone says, I don't want a ballot, I think I'm still probably mail a ballot just so I meet the law. But the, the, the important thing is that it's the, up to the town legislative bodies to make this decision under H48. And you have to, when you make this decision, you say you're going to mail everybody ballots because of COVID. Just make sure that's in the motion. I, I think we should. Personally. And I, I believe me, I've thought about this a lot. And my initial reaction, I think, was the same as Sarah's at the last meeting that 
that the postcards were good enough. And if the school had a problem, that's their problem. But if the bottom line is we have to mail because out their ballots anyway, system. why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we uh, mail out our ballots and just say to people due to a recent legislative change, everybody's going to get a ballot. Plus, isn't it easier for you, Sarah? Then you don't have to be like, oh, I'm getting 2,000 postcards in the mail and, you know, did I send it out to so-and-so if you're just sending it out to everybody? Well, the, the easier part would be to doing what, what Callis is doing, which is they're going to use Jet Service to mail out all these ballots, both their school and their town. Will strongly, he, he's, he really, he talked me out of that because he said there are some there's some definite problems and jet service is doing a great job, but they have this huge, huge new responsibility that I won't go into here. And um, it might be just safer if the town just mails out everything. Who's Will? Will Sitting is the director of elections for the secretary of state's office. Oh, okay. Didn't he grow up in Duxbury too? He still lives there. Yep. So, and, and, and we know that that's going to be extra work for you and the assistant town clerk. Well, it's going to be extra work for ideally the board of civil authority, but the uh, reality of, yes, it'll be, I'll be a lot of late nights watching investigation discovery stuffing envelopes. Well, I can help you with that too. I'm on the board of civil authority. We all are. We all. I think that, you know, we're, we'll just get a system and get it down and, uh, it's, it's a lot of work. I know. But, but, I, but guess, do I, I guess I have come around to the idea that especially where the cost can get reimbursed, not that the cost is everything, but when it was a cost issue, I was flip-flopping the other way. But now I think just everybody gets a ballot, done. Yeah. Somebody willing to make that motion? Peter. Peter, this is Randy. Uh, you had asked the question as to whether or not staff time was reimbursable through that um, that CARES Act funding, and I didn't hear an answer. I don't know if it was answered or not, but I'm just curious. I don't know. I, I, don't, I have no idea. I'm certainly going to put in for it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I, I would think so. I think that this sets a precedence, too, if the school continues to ask for you know this type of service down the road where you know, the CARES Act money isn't, isn't available. Um, you know, it, it sets the tone that, that that's our expectation. Well, isn't there, isn't there a movement in the legislature to give the school authority to do its own voting and or the state is going to take over all the school voting? I mean, you know, frankly, the school district could do this now as the, the rule, the last people who sent out ballots to everyone was was LHS, a, a company, a printing company in New Hampshire. It's the rule is it's not what goes out, it's what comes back. So the school district, my first, when I first heard about this, I said to the school district, why don't you guys do it? Just do it. You know, you got, we'll give you our, our checklist. You can do it. They, oh, no, no, no. That's not what we. So there you go. But I mean, right now, I mean, just, just so everybody understands, in case anybody's forgotten, what happens is the ballots come back into our office. We put them all in a big bag and carry them somewhere where they get counted. We don't count them. I mean, yeah, why right. can't they just go right back to the school? They're their own municipal entity. Why do they come to us? Why do we even get involved? Because this legislature hasn't given them any power to do that. No, I understand. But I'm saying, I believe... I believe the legislature is going to give them that power, or they're at least talking about it. But anyway, Good. for now, for now, is someone willing to make the motion that we will? Thank Go ahead, Mary. I move that we um, send um, school and town uh, ballots to um, all voters in the town of Middlesex. Is that it, voters? And, and that we mail the school. Yes. for their share of the cost. And that we get reimbursed through COVID funds. Yeah. That it be reimbursed and uh, that uh, the school pay its share of the expense. Uh, this is due to, co wait, <laughs> due to the COVID uh, pandemic. You got that, Sarah? That was a little bit sloppy. 
I'm just going to start off by saying, Mary, move that due to the COVID epidemic, uh, the town will mail town and school ballots to all active registered voters in Middlesex and bill the school, the WCUUSD for its share of the costs. Well, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> okay. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Thank you, Liz. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We have done it. Thank you. Yay! Ah. Yeah. And now. Uh, we have the draft select board report. And we are going to add that paragraph which we discussed earlier. Good job on the report, Sarah. I liked it a lot. Thanks. Me too. I think of the days when we used to sit around a table and struggle to write these damn things. That was not fun. No, it was not fun. And I appreciate Sarah doing this for us. But that said, it's our report. Is there anything anybody wants to change or thinks we need to change? Other I than, other yeah. than adding the paragraph about article 16 let me look at it one more time yeah i'm gonna look at it one more time too Don't we have to revise it to add um, the new uh, Act 48 stuff too, Sarah, when we're talking about voting? You know, the second to last paragraph. Well, I can. Yeah, I would. That's a good catch, Mary. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to mention that there's a new road commissioner, a uh, road foreman? Thank you, Liz, for publicizing that. It increased my call volume considerably. <laughs> I think that's in the highway report, isn't it? It is. It is. I do have this one question. You said the board would like to thank former employees stepped down in 2020, but I thought that um, Steve's stepped down in 2021. Well, you can take him off. Well, I mean, I think we should say it, but I think we should just say, and in 2021, Steve Martin, road commissioner. Well, it's like January 1st, wasn't it? Let's just say who stepped down this year or something like that. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Whatever. I think it's nice to thank people. I don't think we need to be too picky about the dates. I don't either. Um, and did we double check uh, the Zoom ID and everything? I didn't double check that, but. Yep, I got it memorized by now. Okay, so good. What, can you remind me the paragraph that Sarah is adding aside from H48 in the about third? Article, about Article 16, Mary. Okay, gotcha. While you're talking about that, I just want to tell you guys that uh, I did contact Zoom and for just $50 we can get a one month upgrade so that you can have up to 1000 people at your informational meetings on the 16th and the 23rd. Perfect. Get to the agenda. Where's the agenda? Okay, guys, time's up. <laughs> I thought we, we didn't approve it. We no, we made a motion yet. We're reading. Please, sorry, I, I thought what we had. Doing? I fi I finished reading it. Now I'm looking back at the agenda. Time's up. Okay, <laughs> I move approval of it. 
with the added, Thank you. Is there a second? Wait, wait with the added um, piece that Sarah's going to put in about Article 16. And, and also article, and uh, Act 48. And, and Act 48. 848, yeah. I'll second. Okay, thank you, Steve. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Yay. Russ Bennett has joined us. Welcome, Russ. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Hey, Russ. Hi, so, Russ. Uh, next on the agenda is considering approving an application for the Better Places grant action likely. And Sarah did send us out copies of that information. And Russ is here, I presume, to talk about it. Uh, yes, and I think actually Julie Beth Hines is also on the line. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Julie. The person. Yeah, I think she can sort of set it up no best problem. since she discovered the grant uh, and thought it would be something that would be good for here. Perfect. You got that, Julie Beth? Great. Um, thank you, and, and good evening to those I've, I've, I haven't met before. Um, Julie, I'm... I, I, I'm Mary. You know, if you don't know us, just point to us and we'll identify ourselves. Sounds our good. Names the, our names are on the screen, Mary. Yep. Oh, okay. Very uh, handy. So I'm, I am a planner. I, I work as a planning consultant to a lot of towns and uh, some private clients around Vermont and a lot of other places. I was the director of the Mad River Planning District um, long before Joshua Schwartz back when telephones had cords. Um, and I've been really happy to work with Planetary Matters, but also with your planning commission for the last couple of years on getting some of the grants lined up um, to do the walkable Middlesex plan. And <clears throat> now there is a, a grant opportunity um, that was made available th during COVID. I'm not entirely sure of the source of the funds, but it's being run through the State Agency of Commerce and Community Development. It's called the Better Places Grant, and it's up to $20,000 with no match for, it can be a, it, either a town or a nonprofit has to apply, but it can fund construction on a private property, um, provided there's an agreement for public access. And working with Russ, talking with Sandy and Theo and the, the, your, your terrific planning commission, um, we came up with the idea to apply for funds to install one or maybe two overlooks of the Winooski on the back side of the Camp Mead property. Um, I mostly grew up in Waterbury, um, downhill from Eddie Steele, which probably accounts for my colorful language. Um, and you don't think about the Winooski as a coming through Middlesex, you know, it's kind of been back there or below the dam. And this is an opportunity to put in a couple of safe overlooks with barriers at points where people can actually see the river coming uh, through that little gorge there below the dam. So what this requires is the town would need to be the applicant. Um, and it also requires a, an agreement. It doesn't have to be an easement. It doesn't have to be um, you know, a full license agreement, but it requires um, at minimum some sort of memorandum of agreement between the town and that landowner that, this will be, that there will be an agreement to allow the public to this space. You've been issuing permits for public events at Camp Mead. Um, there's a great relationship there and so what we've put together is a draft agreement. And Sarah, I'm gonna look at you if to figure out if that got to town attorney. Um, Sandy was very helpful in putting that together. And basically it would, it, it would be the town and planetary agreeing to work towards some appropriate recorded legal document for public access to these sites. The grant application, um, would not need the town to commit money. If, however, and, and Russ and his group have estimated that the cost of building one overlook is about 12,500. Then there's gonna be some ancillary costs. Uh, your town attorney's gonna have to look at it. 
and doing two overlooks would be just north of 20,000. Um, the grant maximum is 20,000. If the town were willing to pay the attorney's cost to do the reviews and develop that license agreement or easement, we could apply for both overlooks. If we wanna keep it all clean with no money out of pocket, we gotta go only go for one. So that's an option. Um, the grant can be written with a plan A and a plan B and they can choose either to give you the full 20 grand or to do a reduced amount um, for one overlook. So I'm gonna pause, Russ, I'm sure I'm forgetting something and Sarah, sure. it'd be great to know if this got to the attorney. It did. And I sent it to uh, Peter. Did you see it? I sent it to Peter and Mary. Peter, did you guys see the email from Rob this afternoon? Oh, I did not see that. I did not see that either. I I I was on there till recently. So what time do you think he sent it? Well, let's see. Um, uh -huh. It came over at 3.42. So I probably sent it right after 3.42. Um, I was bad. I was out on my snowmobile at that time, not reading my email. <laughs> okay. Well, that I was can, good. I downloaded good. stuff earlier, so I didn't go back and look. Um, I have a question. Why don't you? Is it a short? Is it a short thing, Sarah? Why yeah, don't you I can read just it read it right now. It says. Um, all right, uh, I have reviewed the proposed agreement between Planetary Matters LLC and the town. This proposal lies somewhere between a memor of memorandum of understanding and a fully realized land use slash easement agreement. It can best be described as an agreement to agree. The whereas provisions provide sufficient information as to the intentions and desires of the parties. The binding sections of the agreement require both parties to work with each other in good faith to negotiate sufficient easement rights to provide the public with a perpetual right of access to the areas within the within planetary matters private property described in the attachment to the agreement. I was not provided the attachment to the agreement, so I'm assuming the description of the property interest involved is sufficient. The agreement also prohibits planetary matters from taking any action with respect to its property from the time of entering the agreement until such time as a permanent easement agreement is executed, which would impede or reduce the potential for future public perpetual access within the areas of the planetary matters property designated in the attachment. Finally, the agreement binds planetary matters to negotiating a future easement that is granted without consideration such that there would be no cost to the town to obtain this land use interest. That's it. I don't understand it. Someone needs to explain that to me. Um, so I'll, I'll take a stab and I know Sandy's on the line as well. What this sets forth and, and I, the, you know, Rob categorized it perfectly. It's not a draft easement. You know, it's not a draft document to be recorded in the land records. Um, but it sets forth the reasons why the town and planetary are, agree are committing to working out some way to guarantee public access to the river um, and through the property from route two basically through to the river um, on that private property. Um, that is as much as the state requires to apply for this grant. So it's basically committing the town to work with planetary matters and vice versa to figure out the right legal instrument by which there will be a perpetual right of public access over a pathway corridor to the river. Does that help? But all this land is owned by planetary matters right now. Is that correct? correct. Yeah. yeah. So why does the town have to get involved at all? Like, oh, because we're applying for the grant. We have to be the ones we have, who to, be, we have to be the applicant. Right. But there is the, the one question I have is who who actually administers the grant? Does Planetary Matters administer the grant or does the town? We would have Julie Beth administer the grant and would manage that. You know, we, we would cover all that so that it wouldn't be a, a, a burden to you. But just to sort of clarify a little bit about um what our intentions are and how this came about is in the um, walkable Middlesex grant mm -hmm. that you guys got, 
one of the things that we started talking about would be, it would be really great for Middlesex to have a river walk along this piece of the river because it's such an incredible piece of geography. You know, geography is where it is. It's not like something else where you can, you can build it or whatnot. And as you know, the gorgeous is gorgeous. And since we now have the, what was the, um, we call it the blue house, it was Seavers. Um, that property goes right to the dam and it's a stunning view there, but we don't really want to open it up to the public yet until we know somebody can't just walk off it and drop down 50 feet. We are committed to wanting to be a part of creating a, a long-term public walkway across the lands that we have that would connect to other lands that we don't have. You know, we can't commit for anybody else's, but it seems obvious that the right of way that the Green Mountain Power has, and if something could be worked out in some time with the um, Cornwall's property at, or whoever might come after them and connect all the way down to um, the Walter Kelly Park, that, that, that could begin to be something. So the legal document that uh, Julie Beth was talking about is a commitment to commit to creating a license or a right of way that would forever me remain public. At this point in time, we don't know exactly where that path should be. And I think townspeople and the path trail people, all kind of people like that should be involved in deciding what those are. And we also don't want to commit to something when we don't know what else we're going to do with the property and then find out we have it in the wrong place and we can't move it. So um, what we saw with this grant is this might be a good way to jumpstart um, access to the river and um, in a safe way so that people can um, at least go down behind the Camp Mead portion where there's a nice overlook that you can see the generating plant. And with just a little bit of trimming, you could see the um, waterfalls that come down over the waterfall. And then there's another small overlook that I think we could easily contain um, with enough space and if somebody's foolish enough to try and, and defeat a barrier that they wouldn't be then dropping straight down into, you know, into the last drop. Um, so our, our thoughts really are the same as, as everything else that we have um, working with the, people, the town of, of Middlesex is that we wanna all be on the same, we wanna have the same goals. And if these aren't goals that are yours then they're not gonna be ours either. <laughs> um, and to try and find a way to, uh, you know, bit by bit, Things don't always come in the order that you expect them. Opportunity just comes when it does. So yep. um, it, seems a, like, it tight, seems like it would have been a mistake to not try. And we are in a tight time crunch to approve this, right? We need to do it tonight. Yeah, unfortunately, this one came out yeah. with a really short time frame. It has to be filed on Friday. Um, Sarah, I think all I have to do is give you a PDF to send uh, to two email addresses, but it does have to be filed on Friday. This one, it came out three days before Christmas with a <laughs> one month turnaround. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I just so, want to make sure everybody understood that yeah. uh, time is of the essence, as they say. I have a board members. Yeah. So, Liz, I'll, I'll ask first. Looking at this map, are you, I see four overlooks with stars one, two, three, and four. Is it the stars one and two that ideally you'd like to apply for the grant for? Unfortunately, we need to renumber those. Okay. Number okay. three, Russ, is the priority one. Yes. And number two is the second one. The, it's okay. the two. Uh, there's one right opposite the dam. That's number two. That's the one that's the, the steepest drop. It's a little mm -hmm. point, a little sort of promontory kind right. of a thing that Eight. we would do. But I think we'd be able to get more access to the public because the public is already on Camp Mead, um, the Camp Mead portion. And we'd do the one where uh, the power line, the power company just leveled a bunch of stuff out back there. 
and would make a bigger space. It's a bigger, safer space with a good overlook. So that that would be the number one one. And then if there's enough money, we would do a little um, containment, little fence over by the other one. And then the other ones are one. There's a little place right near where there's always two chairs on the uh, right of way. Um, that would be nice to put some kind of barrier, not a cyclone fence, but you know something like that. And because it's beautiful, as you know, it's beautiful along the gorge or the filled in gorge. And the last one down, not that these are the only ones, is there's a place where you can walk right down to the water in the summertime and you can actually take a dip or something down there if you wanted to. So that one I don't think would need much in the way of containment, but I think it's up to the trail committee and, you know, working with us and whatnot to figure out what's uh, safe and sensible and and uh, we would commit to doing and um, you know volunteering and, and helping cut a trail um, as long as we knew that if we ended up needing to do something we could move the trail you know our, our intention would not be to end this our, our intention is to make it public so this another question i have is is if if, if the grant if twelve thousand pays for one and you're really looking at like oh it'd be great to apply for the full 20 is there someone from planetary matters that can um commit to that planetary matters will pay for it and maybe they do their own private fundraiser or some sort of town fundraiser so if people want to um help pay for it that way you can get the full twenty thousand as opposed to oh we're gonna say right now yeah. because sort of last minute, we don't want to, we don't want to just throw in an extra five, say we'll pay for $5,000 when we may not want right. to do that. But I'd like you to play, pay for the whole 20 if there's someone who can guarantee outside of the town that they would pay for the remaining cost. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be what the grant the grand tours might say, oh, well, we'll give you 10 or we'll give you 15 or, you know, whatever it is. But we figured we should try and go for all that they, what the maximum is and uh, identify that. We, we did quick numbers and a quick sketch for what we think is in keeping with other forest service and, and those kind of, kind of barriers that are used to this. Um, and <clears throat> yes, I think over time we can raise, we will go, the, a path will want to be maintained, money will need to be raised. Um, we would, I think we would do what the grant would do at this point in time, but I think it would get us started and get the public more um, interested in it. And then we'd figure out where, how we raise more money. Yeah, um, if it, it, this particular year, as you know, is not like the most lucrative year <laughs> right. for um, uh, spending money. So um, it's not that we don't want to see these things. We, we really do want to see these things and we're happy to participate in some I would way. Suggest, that's why we're, that's why. I'm sorry, Russ. Yes, Go Peter. I, I was just going to say, I would suggest we, uh, in good faith, assuming the board is willing to support it, go for the $20,000 and if we get the $20,000, then work together to spend that money or you work to spend that money to get the most we can for that money. I mean, what we don't want to do is create some half-baked thing where it's dangerous. So you right. got to, you got to, I, I know how these, how these things go. You put down numbers on a piece of paper and we go to actually build them. There's always something that comes up that costs more money. So, you know, I just want to be careful about that, but I, I support the idea. I appreciate you bringing this to us. And I love the idea of having uh, public public access to uh, overlook the Winooski River. Mary, you I have there? never been there. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've I never went to, been I went to the Vietnam village years ago. <laughs> so, uh, I take it you wouldn't want to execute an easement town until you actually decide which ones you're building or is it your intention to build all four uh no our, our intention is to you know we're doing this last minute too <clears throat> and we just picked a couple of places that we thought we could throw on the table for discussion um 
And I think the two that we're, we've suggested are the ones that will sort of get the most wow for the buck as it, as it would. We're also very concerned about liability and also not creating, you know, as you know, in the insurance world, an attractive nuisance. Um, we, we don't want, we want everybody to be safe. So you're going to build four and possibly three, or are you going to go all the way down and build? Number no, one? I think the, the number one one is not on our property. So we can't say yeah, so that I we would do that. I think this is us. Uh, the two that we've said are on properties that we own, so we can control that. Um, and I'm also sensitive to, <clears throat> I mean, I, I love the idea of, having a walking path that goes actually, you know, from route 100B up to um, as, as far as it can go. But I also know if we start drawing lines on other people's lands that it can make them crazy. Um, because, you know, we haven't really talked to any of those people. And there is and that. I think we need to have a, a much more public discussion about the values of these kinds of things, you know. Um, and we, we can volunteer to sort of jumpstart the process, just like we did when we were talking about the walkable Middlesex plan and the idea of could we put together volunteers and some of our own folks to pick a path. We can pick a path on our own land and make it available to the public, you know, to walk hill and dale and, and whatnot um, in, the, in the meantime, because I think that's in everybody's best interest. Russ, Steve Martin Steve? here. Yeah. Um, Julie Beth, you were saying initially, um, you know, for one of the things, 12,500, and probably you could do two of them for 20,000. There were some ancillary costs in there, and you talked right. about the legal fees. So, right. what are you, and, and you, your comment, I believe, was that you were asking the town to pay that cost. Well, here's the thing, and I, I thank you for, for no. bringing that up. Um, the maximum from this grant is $20,000 full stop. Um, any other costs beyond that, somebody would have to pay. The estimate for overlooked number three labeled on here for construction, fabrication, and signs to get people there would be about 12500 Right. This grant from talking with Richard Amor at the state and from doing this for longer than I like to admit, really wants the applicants to button down their costs. What about marketing? What about how are you gonna get people there? Now we can make a straight face case that between the town's what next Middlesex and can't Meet social media, we don't need money for marketing. They want people to, they want these to be projects that bring people in. That's covered, but they're going to ask what about your town attorney to figure out the liability, the signage, get the easement recorded and make sure that as we did in South Burlington with the Winooski Gorge Park, you've got the signs up there that tell people if they decide to jump or take a selfie, we're not liable. There will be a cost to that and that has to be identified in this application. And we'll have to represent that either that is coming out of the town legal budget or that you're asking for grant funds to cover that. Because they want this buttoned down neatly and tied with bows, I really might recommend that we apply for the one overlook and identify all the other ancillary costs and ask the state to write a check for that. Um, it would be great to, to say, you know, we'll do external fundraising, we'll do this or that. Unless we've got it identified by Friday, it, those are the kinds of things that send these particular grant reviewers saying, well, do they really have their act together? Do they really know? It? So I, I'd really advocate for either a fully identified cost or um, I think that's all they will fund. What, what would you estimate that cost to be? 15.5. So 12.5 for everything that Russ and his group have identified to build overlook three with barricade fencing, clearing and grading, sign fabrication to get people there. You're 
probably going to need, I don't know what your town attorney's rate is. I'm going by Stitzel's rate in other towns. You're probably going to need eight to 10 hours of your town attorney to execute, draft and execute a license agreement, come up with the liability language. Maybe not that much, maybe it's six hours, but it's not two. You know, that is that within your normal legal budget, probably they'll want it identified in here. And it's either the town's committing that it'll come out of the town budget or it's got to be paid for through the grant. Um, so, I have you know, an idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have to tell you, having just struggled with our, uh, with our budget and Russ is exactly right. This is a, this is a tough time to do to do any kind of outside fundraising effort. I like the idea of being able to do it all within the grant and having no, no financial consequences yeah. for the town or for planetary matters if the grant gets approved. But, you know, Russ, do you have a plan B option? I mean. Yeah, um, I'm just thinking out loud saying, you know, uh, here's this opportunity that came down the pike. If we can get things started, I mean, you put it in the budget three grand for the town's attorney. And I think it makes sense for the attorney work to be done by the town because then that way the town's interest is definitely looked out yes. for. You know, maybe we could split that cost if that's what we need to do. Planetary Matters could put in half of whatever that would be and the town might be able to put in half or we could fundraise for that other half. Um, the trail committee, et cetera, the town maybe would be the backstop, but we could, we could find a way to not make it be an impact on the taxpayers in this particular year. Um, just, you know, sort of thinking out loud. I'd rather try and get all that yeah. we can get. Um, it, you know, once once you decide that you're gonna go to the trouble, you might as well get Yeah, I mean, the Delta, for it, the Delta, that's, that's my thinking. The Delta is 3,500 bucks. So to do the second overlook, um, your total budget would be 23.5. So, yeah. That's that's the so nut. we're talking I'm, about thirty five hundred bucks yep. that we'd have to come up with seventeen hundred, um, and you know I, I mean I'm, I don't have my partners on the line, so I'm reluctant to just say, hey guys, well, I just spent another thirty five hundred bucks and it's an out of which wallet, um, but um, I'm uh, I'm I'm sure that we could come up with at least a half. You know, and it, I just it may be, it may be we would get it covered one way or another. It may be twenty five hundred exactly. if the town attorney doesn't need as many hours as. Are you well, asking us to commit to saying we will give money? That's I think the bottom line because I think that we don't want to commit to that. Like I think that you should apply for the twenty thousand. That we would be supportive of fundraising efforts down the road. Like if there's some sort of you know. Um, I mean, so for this is an example we have right now um, in the works, a community fund that is uh, and it's tied to our food shelf and there's people who give donations to it. And there will be in the works this idea that, you know, maybe there's other uses for the community fund. Um, right now, it's just going to people who need money during COVID for groceries and and paying their electric bills and things that they can't get otherwise. Um, and that's where the money's going to. So I just think given the sort of short notice of this, I as a town, as a select board person, while I completely utterly support this and I want to see this and down the road, I may think as a select board person that yes, we, we want to put some funding to this that right now is not the time for us to say that we would commit, you know, up to $3,000 um, towards this project. Um, I mean, that's my, that, that's my opinion right now. And I'm somebody who loves to spend money. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm willing to just always be like, yeah, let's pay for that. Let's pay for that. But I think right now, given the work that we've just done on our budget and, and knowing how some people are feeling, um, in the town about the village and the expenses around the village, um, that I just think it would be in everyone's best interest to, for you guys to apply for whatever amount you want to apply for and that we work as a community to raise any extra monies that may need to be raised. That's my opinion. If I'm fine with that. 
Yeah, Sarah, if if we carried two grand for town attorney, um, in your experience, would that probably cover getting an easement put together? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen. I'd have to look at Rob's bills. I don't know exactly what he charges. I assume that the going rate is around two seventy five an hour, right? So how much uh, is? Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, for municipal stuff. Yeah. No, no, that's that's about right. Um, twenty seven fifty. Call it twenty five. Hey, look, guys. Here's uh, what I'm yeah. asking. Let's let's agree that we are going to go forward in good faith without without okay. you guys or us committing any money at this point in time. And let's see, first of all, if we get the grant. Yep. <laughs> right. Um, and I, we'll if come up. we get okay. the grant, then we can talk okay. about a community fundraiser. We can do all kinds of things. If we don't get the grant, then it's a moot point. Okay. Yeah, right. Please right. get a figures in, doesn't she? I'm I do. I have to put in, I have to basically say the 2,500, you know, if plan A is funded, uh, the town planetary matters will provide the 2,500 in match. And we'll I think, sort I think that that's out. That's what we should do. Okay. I think we should do what our initial understanding was is that this should be a zero cost to the town. So yep. we should make it be that. Okay. Um, and if we need to cover that, then we'll figure that out. Um, but the backstop will be planetary matters. Okay. Um, for what that is. We obviously don't want to have it be like, oh, well, the attorney's fees ended up being 8,000 bucks. No, that, that wouldn't really work. <laughs> but, I, th um, I think this is you know, we can put within range. Line around it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Let's just make yeah. it, keep it simple. Yep. yep. And I, I will just quickly say that the enthusiasm at the state for this project and for everything going on in Middlesex Village is there, you are very much on their radar screen as a, uh, a overachieving superstar doing a lot of great work. So um, I think it's got as good a shot as any, any of the things that are going in. There's a couple of others I'm aware of. And I think this one is really realistic and well thought through. Terrific. I am very excited about it because I honestly have never ever walked down to that side of the river and I would. Right? I mean, I'd I need to do that. So, been behind any same. of those happens. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So we need a. We probably need a motion that, in light of, will this will these minutes be sent with the with the application, Julie? Or no, you don't need a. You don't need that. You will need the to uh, execute the agreement to agree. That is critical, and it does go in with the application. Mm -hmm. um, that's the select board or select board chairman authorized by majority of the select board. Okay, so yeah. all that would be in the motion right now. Correct. Yeah. I would say so. so who's, our, who's, yeah. our, who's our head motion maker, Mary? I know, well, I'm just trying to see what, what you need to have. I move approval of the, what do you call it? The- Agreement to agree. Yeah. Applying for the Thank Bitter Places Grant. To, the, to apply to the for the better Biz, better places grant and to to um, authorize Peter Hood as our chair to execute the agreement to agree that has been drafted and uh, that has been reviewed by our attorney Rob Helpert. Is that it? Second. Yeah. Second. Any further discussion? It hasn't been drafted by Rod Rob Helpert. Oh. At the draft and said reviewed by because it wasn't really done by right. Sandy and others, right? Reviewed and approved by Rob Helper or you know, just the agreement to agree. How about we just leave it the agreement to agree? Up uh, and just drop the rest. So Mary moved approval with um, planetary matters. The agreement to agree with planetary. <laughs> to agree with, planet, with with planetary matters. Right. You're ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hey, we're off to the races, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Second to that. So, Sarah, I need to I stop down. Okay. Sign yeah. that. Correct? Yes. And I think you sent me.
This is the, uh, this is the, well, I've got it, Julia, uh, Julie Beth, I've got this with a big draft thing over it. So I will you... remove that and send it to you. All right, great use. Thanks okay. so much. And uh, Sarah, I'll be in touch about a couple of loose ends. I need the town's tax ID number and some other stupid miscellany this week. Oh, so anything be... having to do with treasury stuff, you should contact the treasurer, Dorinda Crowell. Okay, and, Dorinda, and the only thing that it's not like, I don't know why the state of Vermont can't look this up, but they would like the town's uh, tax identification <laughs> number on this application. Don't, don't worry. No problem. Okay. Sarah has that one. That's about it. But okay. we're, otherwise, we're in good shape. Great. Great. Pretty exciting. It's fantastic. I, I think it's really exciting. Um, there's so much potential there. So. Great. Okay. Hey, have a good evening. Thank All right, you, thank everybody. you so much. Thank good you. night. Thank you. Yeah, we'll go hiking. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, highway report. Advertising for road commissioner action possible. Uh, <clears throat> speaking as your interim acting, whatever I am, uh, road commissioner, uh, my goal would be to agree that we advertise immediately uh, for what I would call a real road commissioner rather than an acting road commissioner. Uh, Steve, has, Steve has said to me and promised to me that the uh, activity in this responsibility is relatively minimal in the winter time. I just got a good taste of it over the last uh, over the last week, I know though Steve probably got more calls than I got because everybody thinks he's still road commissioner. But anyway, um, what I would like to do, and we need to we need to put together a, a job description for road commissioner, but I don't think we need to do that to advertise. So I think we should we should put together an ad. Uh, I think. I think we're not asking for a volunteer. It's a paid position. So we need to think about how we're going to say that. Um, I do think um, in the ad and, and help me out here, Steve, that we should say approximately how much time we think it's going to take. Uh, and I know that's a, that's, a, that's a squishy number, but I mean, is it, you know, is it 10 hours a week? Is it, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I can help you with that. So, I, I guess what I'm what I'm informing the select board, and I don't think we need a motion, is that Steve and I are going to work to put that together and get the ad out there in all the usual places. I am hoping we don't have to spend a lot of money on on advertising if our uh, if our response to our financial person's ads, where we spent quite a bit of money, we basically didn't get much bang for the buck from any of the public advertising, but. Uh, I'd say we should put it in all the usual, the usual free places first, and see uh, and see what happens, unless anybody disagrees. Yes, Dorinda. Um, I know you guys all know this, but it's no money was budgeted for that position. Right. Correct. So, so what are the so there you go. Does that does that make sense to everybody that we do that? Yeah, but Peter, what are the three places that we would post it first when you said free? So Sarah, what are the what are the places? There's the town clerks. So there's the uh, VMCTA. The um, in the case of the road foreman, there's going to be I think VTrans has a site. There is the VLCT has a site that's very popular for for looking at uh, job openings. So those are the free ones besides our website and you know front porch forum. Right. Sarah, Sarah right. I'm right. gonna- Don't say road foreman, say road commissioner. Did I say road foreman? Somebody said road foreman. Maybe I did. It's I'm, Anyway. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Sarah, yeah. I'm gonna be putting the, um, the accounting position on the unemployment um, website, we may want to consider putting that out there too. That's a good idea. Yep. Say, so, Peter, can I say something? Yes. Yeah. Um, did I understand you? I don't, uh, 
uh, you're going to put out an advertisement for the job, but you're not going to give a description of what you want. We're going to give a general description. We're not going to give a full blown job description. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, generally the job description is at, is at interview time, but yes, we've got to say, you know, we want somebody to be road commissioner, be responsible for this, that, and the other, et cetera. Uh, absolutely. I, I would presume, I mean, yes, the answer is yes, but I would presume most people who would apply for the position have a pretty good idea what their responsibilities are, but. That's true. Are you going to ask for though, any, uh, any credentials? You're going to ask for a degree? You're going to ask for uh, uh, experience or, or what? I'd say we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, that's, that's a good question. We got to figure that out, Victor. I don't think we'd be, I don't think we'd be asking for a degree. We'd be looking for, we'd be certainly be looking for relevant experience. I see. And qualifications. And it has to be a paid position? Uh, Not necessarily. There's a good question. It doesn't have to be. Um, I don't know. That's a, that's a good, that, that's a very good question. I mean, do we, do we say we're looking for someone to be a volunteer? I mean, historically, historically, as everybody knows, for the most part, our road commissioner has been a member of the select board and received a beneficent salary that uh, select board members get. And that's the only compensation. Right. right. So it never has, it never has been a paid position, but when you, when you reach out, when you reach out, I don't. I don't know the. What does everybody think? Do we say well, like a volunteer to serve as to serve as road commissioner? I, I don't know, Peter. It might even be a stipend of some sort. But go back to what Dorinda said. We don't. We don't have anything in the budget for it. And why? Why make the shift now? I guess is my big question. Um, is it because we don't have interest for? volunteers now i mean has it been well, is it just a general a general so notice I'm, saying I'm, that you're I'm, looking? I am serving as interim as a volunteer steve had to resign because his son is now the road foreman so we're we're between the devil and the deep blue sea i'm certainly not interested in being road commissioner long term i have my hands full doing what i'm doing um but i'm happy to do it until we get until we get somebody I just, so, I, I don't know. I so mean, Pete, I, I can I play know. the devil's advocate here? Sure. And, you know, I don't, you've had two people volunteer to do it. And now you still want to go ahead. So you're throwing those two people out? No. What's the object? No. What's the no. object of we're going? Throwing, we're, not, we're not throwing those two people out. And uh, I did understand that the one person would do it as a volunteer. Uh, the other person did not say that. Well, the other person said it to me, but that doesn't count, I guess. That's yeah. what I took from it. So just, I mean, I, there, he can change. He we're, talking about, we're talking about, we're talking about, about, uh, about Vic Dwyer and uh, our previous road commissioner, Gary. Uh, Gary that's Lepore. right. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to, that's not a secret. Right. So could it be? I thought so I was told. I, I thought I was told one person withdrew their volunteer. One of those two. Yeah. Is that not the case? Apparently not. Hmm. Well, to be candid, are you talking about me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't say that. I think we are talking about you. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, don't, I feel there's a lot of transparency going on here. <laughs> you know, I have to say this as a citizen, not as a treasurer, but I think there's there's something going on where we don't want these two people in the position. And I think if that's the case, the board needs to step up and say why. Especially if they're gonna ask for it to be a paid position 
over a volunteered position and go against what, what we've been doing this whole time. Might I speak sure. frankly? I'm not so sure, Dorinda, I, I agree with your statement, but we, sort, we haven't had any, I, I mean, the question for me is this. The, the question for me is this. We have promised ourselves as a select board that we will not just accept people who, who volunteer, who come along, who are maybe perfectly qualified and maybe perfectly good at the position for these positions, but that we're going to advertise them. So I'm, su I'm, suge I'm not suggesting that we exclude anybody. I'm just suggesting that it has been our practice and policy to advertise. So I'm suggesting free ads so we don't spend any money, but let's see what we can get on our net. We've got, we've got, we've got two, two fish circling the, circling the bait right now. If that's, if that's who we have, then we can have a process to decide between them. But I'm just uncomfortable just turning around and appointing them, but maybe, maybe or one of them, but maybe other people feel differently. I don't disagree with advertising it. I don't disagree with advertising it, but from a, as a resident, I think for me, especially if folks that are volunteers are, have, have the experience or, you know, the certifications or whatever you want to look at to do it, to suggest that you're going to advertise it as a paid position and overlook volunteers that can fill that role. To me, that doesn't, that doesn't sit well. I don't disagree. So, so Peter, let me be uh, candid again here. I, I don't have any problem with your advertising. I was just wondering what your motive was. I don't, I didn't know maybe you had somebody uh, in the waiting in the wings or somebody you wanted no. to offer it to. Not at all, not at all of it. Look, okay. Peter, let me interject here for a second. Um, <clears throat> no, our, our advertising, I mean, I think we're going to end up advertising for volunteers in that sense, or or maybe a stipend. But in the meantime, we still can put that advertisement out, Peter. But in the meantime, we can interview the two volunteers. That doesn't preclude us from interviewing them in the in the meantime. Uh, whatever the time. No, I. That's fine. But I I I guess ideally, I just. I just want this to be an open and fair process. And I don't want it to appear that it's, you know, an inside job and we're interviewing these guys and we're really going to pick one of them, but we're just, but we're just, uh, but we're just putting it out to advertise because we think that's the right thing to do. Yeah. So that, that's all I'm worried about. And to answer your other question, Vic, uh, there is absolutely no one that, that I have in mind, and I don't think Peter has either. He hasn't mentioned anything to me. So we don't have somebody out there at all that we're thinking of. So that's fine. I'm, I'm fine. Go ahead and advertise it. I'm, I'm fine with that. I just- Can I make a comment? Ask the question. And, uh, May I make a comment? Yes. Peter. Yes. Um, so I, I also just want to you know acknowledge that, and I said this before at the last meeting, or when this was brought up and Vic, Vic had expressed, um, you know, this, and, and I understand it, it, it does feel like, you know, we're saying, oh, uh, thanks, but no thanks, Vic. But, but what I do want to, you know, stress is that this person not only has to have knowledge of the roads, but they also have to have a good working relationship with the staff, because we also have to think about our staff. And if it, and, and so I think that the staff need to be a part of this conversation. And, and I just want to make sure that the person that, that we do choose, whether it's a volunteer or not, is someone who can get along with the town and has an, and our new road foreman, uh, road foreman um, so that they, so, so that, you know, there isn't discord. Um, and, and I sense, you know, and, and I will say just, and I'm not going to say who I've heard it from, and it's not the select board, but it, you know, it, sort of behind the scenes that, that, that possibly Vic, and I don't know this myself because I like you, Vic, I only know you from these meetings and from seeing you in town, but that there might be some disagreements that would, that would cause people not to want to have have you as the road commissioner. I'm being very frank right now, but that's what I've heard. And so there may be a concern that 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 you might not be the best candidate to be 
overseeing the the new road foreman and and the the road guys and so that's just you know why i think it's important for us to have it be not just someone who volunteers because this is a bigger job than just oh hey i'm gonna you know go out and and uh volunteer my time there is there is a element of um you know dealing with with personnel issues and so i'll leave it at that well, to answer that, uh, Liz, uh, I, I uh, agree with you wholeheartedly. And I, and I do remember Paul Sermonera saying that at the end of the two meetings ago. And, uh, you know, Paul and I might have had uh, some uh, differences, but uh, I think they were genuine. Uh, we tried to explain it to him. I tried to be as uh, forthcoming as I, I could be. Um, also, in the last few, last few years that... Uh, I have been around that road crew quite a few uh, quite a few times, and I've listened to their complaints. And uh, it wasn't about me. So uh, it goes both ways. As let's, well. let's do this. I, I, what I'm hearing is, what I'm hearing is, uh, let's let's Steve and I get together and put together the ad, put it in the free places for some relatively short period of time. And then whatever we have, we'll, we'll commence the selection process. And my strong preference would be that, um, that Shane, is, Shane is included in the, uh, in the interview process as the road foreman to get his, his input and his support for whoever the candidate is. And whoever, whoever on this board is interested in doing it, I guess I'm, Presuming it would be, uh, be be Steve and I, but we would welcome other people to be involved in the interview process as well. I mean, I just don't want any any appearance, right, wrong, or otherwise, that this is some kind of an inside put up job. I don't think it's good for the town. I don't think it's good for anything. So I want it to be a deliberate, thoughtful, careful process, and it's not. It's not an emergency. I mean, my, my goal would be to have somebody in place by the spring construction season, because that's, I'm pretty good on, on road sanding and plowing. I can deal with those issues, but when it comes to real construction, that's not me, so. It's fair enough. Thank so you. We, have, we have time, it's not, a, it's not an emergency. Yeah, it's Thank a, you for being straightforward, Liz. You're welcome. So does everyone, I don't think we need a motion on that. Does everyone agree that that's the right approach? Yep. Any disagreement? So Steve, you and I will, you and I will put that together. Okay. Okay. And, and Vic, thank for, thanks for your comments. And, and Liz, thank you also for your, uh, for your comments. I appreciate You're it. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Um, in terms of uh, a highway report, in terms of in terms of other issues, um, we had our first big big snowstorm of the year this past uh, weekend. Uh, the weather forecast was back and forth about whether there was going to be rain or not. Our road foreman made the decision not to plow early in the day. Uh, it turned out, in hindsight, fearful that it was going to rain and it was going to be icing. Um, we did get some, some pushback from some of our residents about where's the road crew, how come the roads aren't plowed, blah, blah, blah. Um, he made the best decision he could make. We support him, I support him in making that decision the best way he knows how. But in hindsight, in hindsight, they probably should have been out there plowing. Uh, but the roads are plowed now, they're sanded, they're in good shape and uh, we're in full on on winter mode now the equipment all held up the guys held up they're tired but uh but they're fine you good excellent job on? peter i'm sorry i said they did an excellent job yes i i agree vic i think and, they did. and if if anybody uh is familiar with the work that they do would know that uh the reason they didn't plow uh, some of the roads was exactly what uh you said they didn't know whether it was going to rain or so if they plowed them and it rained on it, they're ice. So yeah, totally. Weather, and both Roger Hill and the National Weather Service were forecasting serious rain. So we can uh, we can put it on their uh, on their shoulders. 
Absolutely. Good time to have winter tires. The one car that I ran into in the ditch had worn out summer tires. <laughs> it's hard to have much, hard for me to have much sympathy for that. Um, anything else, Steve, that you have to add? No. Okay. Any questions, anyone? Wow. Yawn. <laughs> Treasurer's report, Dorinda. I uh, sent you the financials as they stand through today's payments. Um, that's basically it. We still got no response to speak of on the ad. And that's the treasurer's report. <laughs> so the thing I want everybody to think about when it comes to this is um, I think fairly soon, and, and Dorinda's going to do another another run at some some of the free advertising, not the paid advertising. But if we can't if we can't get somebody to apply for this who's qualified and appears to be what we're looking for, I think we're looking at hiring an accounting firm as a subcontractor. And I want everybody to be prepared that I think that's what we might have to consider doing. I just want to be sure that we have the new position or situation in place uh, well before well before July 1st. So it's none too soon to uh, to be pushing ahead on this. And I don't know how everybody else feels about that, but I don't think we have a lot of choice. Does that reduce at all um, hours um, for Dorinda? Like would that free up some time for Dorinda herself currently? That's the idea. That's the idea. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's not the time. I mean, it's more or less somebody who can do that daily, that data entry and do it correctly. Um, it's not my time so much because I'm not doing it and I'm not going to step into that position and do it. I don't have the time um, to devote to that. And I made that clear when I came on. Okay. Um, and does it cost, uh, like, how do you pay for those? Is it a contract that you have for a certain number of hours, Peter? Well, that's what we have to, that's what we have to figure out if, if we get to, the, if we get to that point, how many, how many hours it is. And I think we need to, we need to interview, interview potential candidates and see what they think it's going to take, how many transactions it is. It's their, it's their business. They should be able to tell us what they need. But, I the other side of this is we have heard up to three current clerk treasurers from other towns that might be interested in doing the work. But then you go away from what your original um, thought process was by having somebody available in the office when people called and things like that. So right. that's, but, the you know, I think so I'll, so I'll, I'll I mean, I, I would just tell you in my business career for, for IT services and other services, um, we made arrangements from time to time where we had someone, someone who worked for an outside entity who was in our office on a regular schedule every week. Right. So, you know, it might be that it might be that they were in the office two days a week, three days a week. I don't know. We have to, we, we have to work our way through that, uh, through that process, but a qualified accountant could come in and look at the work we have and tell us about how many hours they think they would need to do it. But that won't address the grant situation, will it? Well, no, the grant, the grant thing needs to be part of it. I mean, it isn't just, our goal is not just to have a bookkeeper, but to have somebody who can do some of this higher level financial stuff as well. So we've got to figure out We've got to figure out that piece. We've got we've got our work cut out for us. I'm just saying, my concern is, we can't sit on our hands much longer. We've got to get moving. And I'm sure I'm pretty sure that there are accounting firms out there who would who would be interested in something like this. It's good work for them. And guess what? It isn't going to be it isn't going to be cheap. But thank God we put a bunch of money in the budget. 
Have we um, have we posted on Front Porch Forum? Do you guys want to do that? We haven't. I don't think. I don't think we have. Well, no. We should. We should. I mean, it's not going to hurt. There might be somebody out there. Yeah. I mean, I think we get the word out any way we can. I I just don't want to spend. I mean the. Did we get a, a single response at all from our uh, paid advertising? You mean the seven days? Uh, one. Yeah. And they had no municipal experience. They weren't uh, certified in any way. They owned a business and used QuickBooks for the last X number of years. No, that's not, that's not what we're looking for. Yeah. Do I have one question? Yep. Yep. This uh, general ledger, uh, this is a current, um, this is number seven, the period seven. Does that include tonight? Yes, it's through Warren? today. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Any other, any other comments or thoughts on that? Uh, on that subject. So Dorinda, I would I would go ahead. I like the idea of putting it on front porch forum. And let's see, but let's be ready to let's be ready to move ahead sooner no. rather than no. later here. I'm at list, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. She yeah. suggested the unemployment list as well. You yeah. know, when jobs for you know, one would hope that we might find somebody there. Be nice. <laughs> it would be. Well, let's see. Let's see who we can uh, who we can get. But I just want to be darn sure that whatever we do, we have a plan in place. Yep. Okay. Um, approving January fifth select board minutes action likely. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, is that you texting me, Liz Sharp, <laughs> in the middle of a meeting? Really? I've been hearing all these little noises. They're my dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll respond after the meeting. Um, okay, we've approved the minutes, correspondence. Um, the only correspondence we've had has been, was in support for, for the trails, uh, the, the, the grant that you guys just discussed. That was from Adrian McGee and the Trails Committee, and I think I forwarded that to you. Um, and there was some chitter chatter back and forth about Notch Road um, from the two residents on Notch Road, but it's nothing earth shattering. And I also forwarded that to you guys as well. Yep. Can I ask a question? Can we? Can you please refresh my memory? And maybe Steve, you're the one who knows. Um, is that park? Is the new parking lot on Notch Road ready for people to park at? And is there a little trail to go to the main trail? The parking lot that's that's uh, up by the town forest is the the WMA parking lot, the Wildlife Management Area. And we expanded that and it is ready for cars and people are using it, but they have to walk up or they do walk up the class four road to get into the town forest. But what um, Brian is referring to is the old parking lot, right? That's the one. Oh, well, what about the one that's going to be in the sand pit area? The, oh, yes, we did construct uh, uh, one in the sand pit area. And people can park in there, but uh, they've got to walk up through. There's no, there's no trail that leads up to the town forest. Okay, so they basically then have to go back out and walk up Notch Road in order to get to. Um, Correct. And so, are there signs that show people that there's that new parking area? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to talk with Lee. Was going to uh, had talked about doing signs. And I know that we talked about a sign. I'm not sure if there's a sign up there yet or not. I don't think there is, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm just wondering if we should do, are we talking about this now? I mean, cause I, I was gonna say we should maybe do um, 
have the regular parking lot that's there that holds like four cars and then have signs that say no parking allowed on the road overflow parking is back at the sand pit yeah the one that's up the uh, wma parking lot up there now um i was up there uh once after we had put put that in and there were 10 vehicles in there so it will hold a few cars oh it did hold 10 okay wow that's a lot that depends on how people park because they can right. come in there and park five feet apart and then all of a sudden you only got five cars in there right so yeah. i believe the other thing that the that the trails committee uh was talking about was creating a trail liz from the lower yeah. we'll call it sand pit parking lot around they had a plan to go around the uh the the town pit and connect with uh and connect with the town forest somehow i don't remember exactly yeah that's what i thought sort of like the hunger mountain has two slots and there's two different ways to get up hunger mountain with two different parking areas but the, but the idea and i don't think that happened to my knowledge that that didn't happen yet but that that's in the works because the idea is not to have people walking up uh right up the road so um so Brian, you know, was, was you know, pretty um, upset with all this. I mean, I, I personally have avoided even going there in the winter because of it. I don't want to be like that person, <laughs> you know, who can't find a parking space and then causes grief for the people that live on that road because they have to park on the side or he can't get by on his truck or people get stuck and all of that. So I think, you know, we really do need to consider putting up signs. We, we, we've sort of caused a problem that's a good problem. People are hiking and getting out and people are coming to Middlesex, but we need to address the people that live in that area. And if that means, you know, saying parking here, no parking on the road and park down in the, you know, overflow parking, then we need to do that. Cause it sounds like a ton of people use this trail. There are definitely people using the trail. How big, how big a problem is, is, is obviously uh, open to discussion and the, and the neighbors up there have divergent points of view, so it makes it challenging. Okay. But um, I agree with the signs. I mean, we got to have signs and, and uh, who, do we plow the WMA lot? Who plows it? That's where we turn around. Yes, so we, we do. Plow. Okay, and are we plowing, plowing our sand pit lot as well? I, I don't know that answer. I can find out. I bet we're not. We should be. Okay. But we need. We also need signs. I'll uh, I'll reach out to Lee and see where he is on on uh, right. on signs. But I okay. but I agree, Liz. We need signs. Yep. Since we're talking highway issues, even though we're through that officially, I noticed that they had put some. Uh, someone had put up some signs for snowmobiling on one of our town poles. Are they allowed to do that? I believe we gave them permission four or five years ago when that when the old trail got closed off, Mary. Okay, so like the one- that, They've been doing that for the last four or five years. Okay, when they're down near air in the weeds is okay. Yeah. And then the other thing is it seemed like they're, they were on the main road for a while, but maybe I'm wrong. Is that not the case? With that snowmobile. If it's anybody on the main road, it's your uh, select board chairman trying to get to the vast trail. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a second, aren't those signs? Uh, I mean, I'm just looking at the signs that were down by the P cars mailboxes, and right. then the that is that is the vast trail. Yes. Okay, so there's a little small section where you go on the main road, right? Well, I believe there is. It's, it's <laughs> I would say it's three quarters of a mile. Yep. Yeah, what I thought. Do you get back on the trail? The, okay. the, the new landowner over on the other side closed off the old trail, so it was a was an issue. Has it been? I I am not aware that it has created any problems since it's been there, and it's been there quite a while. So they do a good job of putting those of putting those signs up. Um, have you got enough order signers, Dorinda? I've only got two. Okay, I'll okay. look at it. Um, I do have just, just a couple, just a couple you of just quick sent it? Okay. Oops, I'm I, sorry. 
I have a couple of quick things. Number one, our, uh, our new town emails are in place. You all got, uh, I believe, emails from Phil telling you how to set it up. I set mine up. His, his instructions were good. Um, I would make it a goal before our next select board meeting that everybody gets their new email set up so that we can then change the emails on the town website, et cetera, et cetera, and have people start contacting us through that. And I would also suggest that after the next two weeks, all our correspondence, which we're now getting in our old emails, get switched over to the new, uh, get switched over to the new emails, which is the, uh, which is the intent. So I'm happy to help people if, if you have a problem. I, I found it pretty, uh, pretty easy to do, but uh, it does, you, you got to follow the steps and you got to make sure you type stuff in correctly. Otherwise it isn't going to work. Yeah, I did it as well. It took me a while. First, I, I had to, it didn't take me a while because he gave me the wrong password, but I also put it on my phone and you do have to follow it exactly to the T. Um, and it took me like a couple tries because I did like dot com instead of dot org. And I was like, what's wrong? So no, it's that's very that's easy if you follow the instructions to the D. Okay. I, I started setting it up on my phone and I got stuck. So I gave up. But I've, I've got more work to do. But all I'm saying is we're, we're finally there where we have this tool to use and we need to uh, and we need to use it. So please, uh, please make an effort to get that set up. Um, that I, you reminded me, I forgot about it. The other thing, the other thing I have is, and Susan Clark has been uh, has been whispering not so quietly in my ear, offering offering uh, help in organizing our informational meetings. Um, it seems to me we have two two decisions we need to make about the informational meetings, other than other than contents of the presentations, which at some point we have to figure out. Um, but one is, uh, Sarah has also said she's gonna, she's gonna expand our license so we have no issues with numbers of people on the Zoom. But does it make sense to hire someone, and this is not uh, belittling uh, our town clerk's efforts to run the Zoom meeting? From a from a technological point of view, and uh, the reason I'm asking that is, I participate in a lot of Zoom meetings. And when you have somebody who really knows how to do all that stuff, like, you know, put stuff up on the screen, take stuff down, deal with multiple screens with multiple participants, recognize people who are raising their hand virtually on the Zoom, uh, it makes for a much better meeting. And I'm just afraid. Uh, and if we don't have that many people, I don't think it'll be that challenging, but I think potentially being able, you know, if people are asking, asking questions about things, being able to put documents up on the screen would be helpful rather than have people pawing through their town report. But I don't know how other people feel about that. Um, the other question is, uh, who's going to run the meeting? Are we going to, it's a, it's essentially a, a select board hearing, I guess. So am I as chairman? going to run the meeting? Do we ask the town moderator to run the meeting? I don't know the answer to that. So, so I had a conversation with Susan about this very topic um, after she had talked with you, Peter. And, yep. and I do agree that it would be helpful to hire someone. Um, and she had in mind her sister who does, who did our, um, yep. what's next, Middlesex. Um, so she does a lot of this already. It doesn't have to be her sister, but I think she'd be affordable. I'm thinking at the most, we would probably, I mean, she hasn't submitted a budget or anything like that, but I would imagine for two meetings, it might be a couple hundred dollars per meeting. So maybe 500 bucks or something for the two meetings. Susan, um, Susan did say the word we like so much to me today. Great. She said volunteer. Yeah, and she may volunteer as well, but I think to put it out there, it would be nice to pay someone to do this work. Um, and and that's probably even sort of, maybe not stipend costs, but whatever. So I think that that would be, you know, I, I think it's a really good idea to have someone. And I too am on meetings all the time. I've been on big, you know, conference meetings and it's really helpful to have someone who is doing all that work because, 
because we're going to be the ones listening and answering questions. So, and then Peter's question about should he run the meeting or should um, Susan potentially run the meeting? Susan said she didn't have any sort of, um, she had nothing against running the meeting, but she did say she, what she didn't want townspeople to get confused at as to is would this act like a town meeting and it doesn't like people can't make changes people can't you know um it would basically be a um what what i would envision as we run through the articles that are on there um explaining what each article is and offering questions um specific to those articles um so either peter could run it or susan could but it would not be run like a town meeting and so she was a little worried about people getting confused you know, yep. it's a town meeting. This is a virtual town meeting. So I just wanted to throw that out there that I think personally, it would be helpful to have Peter run the meeting and that um, we hire someone to, to be the person that shows the stuff on the screen and um, and is there to moderate the questions that, that people have coming through. Um, and that would be good enough. I yep. think... I agree with that. I think we should have somebody who really knows how to do it. What time are we starting those meetings? I can't remember. Six o'clock. That's plenty. That's, yeah, that, yeah, that's what you need to cover. Sorry. Okay, well, with that, with that direction, uh, I will talk to Susan and have her talk to her sister. Does that make sense to everybody? And if she's not available, she indicated to me today that she thought she was available for both those times. So. I think right. that'd be good. In terms of, I guess in terms of content, I, I guess in thinking about it, I think we go down through the articles. Where I'm, where I'm uncomfortable is when we, I mean, I'm, you know, we're gonna need to talk about the town budget. We're gonna need to talk about the road grader. Um, in terms of, in terms of all those, all those other special articles, what I've been telling people who've asked me is that they should get on the Zoom and be prepared to defend themselves just like they would at town meeting. Now, how many are actually going to do that? I don't know. I don't know if it makes sense for us to suggest to those people that they join the Zoom. How do you feel about that, Sarah? Oh, uh, well, that's up to you, Peter. Well, I'm just you, curious, you curious what, you, what you think. I, I am not I mean, that sounds like hell to me, but you know, you go ahead. I mean, I'm just saying I'm, I'm fine, I guess, talking about the conservation fund. I'm fine. You know, I can talk for Central Vermont Economic Development, but I'm not qualified to talk about CVHHH or community connections or. I think we need to extend an invite to them that they need to at least know that this is happening and they're not going to know if they're not living in our town. Um, right. And, and, and they can decide whether or not they want to join. Um, don't say that they're going to be required to speak on it, but if someone has a question, they may want to be there to answer that question. No yeah, I, mean, I them, email those guys. No pretty than pretty having them attend town meeting and be available to answer questions. Yeah. Sarah, what were you going to say? I said I email those guys pretty frequently. I had to email them to remind them to get their reports in and all to get their requests in. So I've got a, I've got a generic mailing list already. It won't take any time to send it. Good. I think that would be good. It's, it's more it. transparent. If they don't, if they don't show up, they don't show up. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Sarah. You're so efficient. We take it for granted. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Sarah. But I think I think the idea is just to go right down, you know, right down in terms of an agenda for the meeting, we go right down through the articles. Unless anybody disagrees. No, I think that's what we do. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm fine doing that. I will reach out to uh, Susan about her sister. I think uh, the question is, do we, and, and this is something, Peter, that you'd want to think about, and you would probably be talking to Delia about this very question, is do you want, after every article, for there to be an opportunity to ask questions? I think that makes the most sense, right? And so- Oh, yeah. Say, yeah. No, okay. I'm, no, absolutely. Okay. Questions, questions, questions. And, you know, what I'm hoping is that, you know, we can ask people. I, I found that, <coughs> I don't know about you, Liz, 
I found the, the hand raising thing that's built into Zoom to be confusing to a lot of people. Yeah. I think just saying, if somebody's watching the screen, if somebody goes like this, <laughs> the technology person or I will realize they want to be recognized. The other thing too is there actually is a, um, that's different from hand raise. There's two boxes. There's one for comments and there's one for questions. Yep. So the questions one, you could actually type in your question. And if for some reason somebody's on a phone or doesn't know how, you know, to how to ask that question via typing, um, they may just, that, that you're going to want to talk to Delia about that too. Like if there's someone that's just I'm calling. Sure, I'm sure she is going yeah. to tell us how to do this. That's what yeah. I'm hoping. And we'll follow her recommendation and see how it goes. We'll learn from our first one and do right. better on the second one. Right. Perfect. But does everyone agree that Peter should do it and not Susan Clark? I agree with that. I do too. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Peter's fine with it. So Susan's fine with that. She pointed out an email today that it's it's a it's a select board show, not a uh, town meeting show. So it yeah, that's be exactly that's exactly what she said to me. Yeah, that's exactly what she said to me. And I'm I'm fine. I'm fine with that. I have a little moderating experience. <laughs> yeah. How so many years? So I I do have one one last thing, and I'm sorry to sorry to keep you. I know we're we're past time, but. Steve, do we need to affirmatively somehow say where we are on this whole notch road situation? Because it feels to me like we keep trying to tell people what's going on and they're not satisfied. We keep getting snarky emails saying, what's happening? Why aren't you moving forward? Why isn't the road being maintained? You know, blah, blah, blah. blah. I don't know, mostly coming from one person, but. I don't know. I don't know what to think. Well, I, I think we've got to move forward with that. Uh, how to go about that? I mean, as I mentioned to you before, I think we're going to have to have some extra meetings to be able to handle all of this stuff that we've got. And that might be one right there where we have a meeting to try to get this and have these landowners there. And, and uh, WMA needs to come in on that meeting, too. I think that's a good idea. I just, I just feel like we're, and I know the personnel changed to WMA, but I just feel like we're sort of between the devil and the deep blue sea and we're not really, really doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, the other, Steve and I had a conversation and I, I meant to talk about this earlier, but Steve and I had a conversation. He was, he was suggesting that on these, on these bigger issues, which we seem to struggle to deal with, that we potentially schedule some extra meetings with those items being the only item on the agenda and invite the interested parties and, and have it out and try and uh, try and move things forward. The other, the other one, which I have on my radar screen, which has been a struggle for a long time is uh, the whole Welch Park situation. And uh, I am ready to make a recommendation that we withdraw from Welch Park. I've had it, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with Carl Balin, I'm done with Benderson, I'm done with all of them. And I think the town has little or no benefit of being part of, uh, part of Welch Park and a fair amount of uh, aggravation. So anyway, I'm not, I'm not asking for a decision tonight, but there's another example of something that we need to sit down and focus on and figure out, which we don't seem to be doing. Well, if you do have that recommendation, maybe you would have the steps we have to take to do it too, Peter. Well, I thought I would. I thought I would ha have a conversation with the attorney. I, th I think we just put them on notice and say we're withdrawing. the the uh, the The horse trade is is probably going to be or might be that uh, we agree to uh, maintain that road, which we're basically already maintaining. We're plowing because it goes to our fire station. But it's, it's premature to even to even say that. But uh, certainly, we're not going to let that road go unplowed. <laughs> Peter, who is the attorney? Yes. These? I'm sorry. I said, who is the attorney these days? Um, John is Riley. It? John Riley is the one who did the amended bylaws, which still, to this day, to the best of my knowledge, have never been signed by all the parties. 
I've never even seen them. <laughs> so <laughs> well, we looked at them. We looked at them way back when, Mary. I mean, it was over a year ago. Yeah. Well, but anyway. I remember we asked him to do it, and he was going to do them really quickly, and then I never remember receiving them. But maybe that's just me. I mean, I haven't, I haven't looked at them. I haven't looked at them in a year, in a year either. But uh, you know, everybody, everybody verbally agreed to accept them, but then, to my knowledge, they were never executed. I know, I know, for the town, we never signed them. I never signed them. Um, but anyway, that's that's just another example. We're going to have. We have we have other things uh, we have other things lurking in the background as as well. So on the road uh, thing, I mean, what's WMA, um, Steve, that you want to include? Wildlife management area. Oh right, right, right. State, it's the state. Yeah, well that okay, well that's going to be a big meeting. Um, okay. Um, hey, Steve, of uh, Peter. Okay, talk. Yes. My concern about Notch Road is that there's a statutory process for taking a class four road up, as you know. That's right. And it seems to me as though what we're, the frustration that's coming out is the fact that this process isn't being followed. Either you say to the people who live on the road, you bring a petition to us and we'll follow through the procedure or else the select board initiates it, goes through the whole site visit procedure and either makes a decision I one way or another. Sarah, I don't think we're quite there yet to do that. We still have some preliminary stuff and like with the state of Vermont, the WMA to agree on something that's further up before we say, oh, okay, now let's change the classification of the road. Okay, because there's just a, if people, and, there, there's a procedure and it's a public, it requires public hearings and requires notice. That's, and that takes that's correct, but I don't think we're there yet. Okay, just bringing it back to your attention. No, certainly from the town's point of view, we're not ready. If, if all of a sudden, if all of a sudden we received a petition, we'd have to act on it, obviously. Um, I just, it's just frustrating to me. Right? I mean, we need to, we need to tell people what's going on and either do it or not do it or, or whatever. And I don't mind, I don't mind telling our, uh, our, our landowner up there who keeps telling us that we're being irresponsible and we've created a safety hazard. Bottom line is he's creating the safety hazard, not us. But anyway, we did a we did a preliminary uh, a timeline, uh, an anticipated preliminary timeline, and and that that was out there. That and and uh, Brian has that. I mean, and that was a case he, where he, and why he, I said we aren't act like he doesn't have it. Any, anyway, well, <laughs> enough, anyway. enough said on Notch Road tonight, but. Yeah. Um, I couldn't agree more. We need signs up there, and I will. I will talk to. Uh, I will talk to Lee about that, and I will talk. Uh, go forward with um, uh, getting the sister to uh, help yeah, us yeah. with our help us with our Zoom meetings. Perfect. Yes. Anything else, anybody? No, this has been a very long meeting. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so just just remember, everybody, the first one of these meetings is January 28th. It's coming right up. What? No. What are you talking about? No, it's what not January 28th, Peter. It's in February. First meeting is, you have a select board meeting on the 2nd of February, and then the first informational meeting is February 16th, and the yeah. second one is, Feb is February 23rd. I've got, I've, got some, I've got some funky dates written down here. I'm sorry. What are the dates again? The 16th? 16th at a regular meeting and the 23rd you've got uh you've got a little postcard got now. And oh, here I've got, the, I've got it down here I'm, I'm reading the wrong thing i'm sorry i'm tired i've got the right dates here who is our next select board meeting the next select board meeting is february 2nd february 2nd yep uh, you got me scared there because I've got something else on the 20th. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I've got all this paper set out in front of me and I'm looking at the wrong paper. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Anything okay. else? Anything else, anybody? No. Nope. I was just going to say quickly that um, we scheduled the first meeting for um, the subcommittee meeting for the budget um, for the capital spending plan um, committee. Uh, and there's a good sort of large group of people that are interested that we had gotten from the survey that we sent out to the town 
Um, and I just wanted to say that Peter and I are going to be there. And if one of the, if anyone else on the select board said, oh, I really want to be at that meeting, then it's going to have to be warned. And so you're going to need to tell me that in advance. Um, well, I was thinking of going on it, but I mean, I don't, I don't know what it is. You don't know what? I don't know the date of it. It's February 18th. So if you're interested, then we're going to have to warn it because I, I'm, otherwise I'd have to kick you off. Why? <laughs> Why? It's a, it's because it a, would be more than three people on the so select board. It would constitute a select board meeting potentially. So that means if three of us meet in a grocery store, that's a select board meeting. And well, you, no, you we just can't talk about different. the town. We just Come can't on. talk about the town. And we're going to be talking about the town at this meeting. Okay. You guys, it's easy I, enough to warn it. That's a simple thing. Let's be, yeah. let's. I just don't want to forget because I'm not used to this kind of thing. Right. I'd like to go. Okay. So, Sarah, we're going to need to warn the meeting. All right. Just send me an email saying, you know, right. five o'clock, whatever, Zoom. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, should I use the town Zoom? Probably. I was going to use mine. I've already sent it out with my Zoom. It depends, it depends on what day it is, but yeah. Because okay. if another, if like the planning committee, if it's on a Wednesday or something and the planning commission is using it, then no, you can't do that. What day is it? What day of the week is the 28th? 28th. It's not the 28th. It's the 18th. I'm sorry. It's Wednesday. See? I think. Or it's, a, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk with you about it, Sarah. And, it's a Thursday. And, You're good. Uh, well, send me an email. Would you, uh, Liz? Yeah. All right. Are you guys adjourned? Yep. I think we're about to be, yes. I hope we're about to be. I got another meeting, so I want to get off this one. Okay. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thanks for your patience and understanding. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.